Hey everyone, it's Trisha, and I'm back again today with another video. So I thought I would do a poinsettia video because I had seen that someone asked how you go about coloring these. So I thought I would do a little tutorial for you. This is the, uh, these are the, t the poinsettias from the brand new set in 20, 23 and I don't think I have unfortunately I don't have the artwork to go with them I just have these so I'm just going to show you how to color these these poinsettias up really quickly and um, hopefully it's not another hour and a half video like last time but these should be these should be pretty quick because they're they're little so I'm going to grab a Number zero and number one brush. So I have my number one zero brush, my three poinsettias in different sizes, and then I have an 856. I'm actually not going to ink this up in the brown. I'm going to ink it up in the red. And I we can do both if you if you want to see it another way. I could do that, but right now I'm going to do just the red. So we'll start with this big one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up this whole thing here with this red. And I'm not going to stamp this off. I want this to be nice and juicy. So when I pull my color out, it's going to look fantastic. So for this, I'm going to put this down in the corner here. Maybe we'll do like a little corner and we'll put a sentiment here for a Christmas card. So I think I'm going to stick this little guy right here. Perfect. And I've done some masks here, just in case you want to, I wanted to th have this one be very prominent in the beginning, up in the top, so I'm gonna mask this off. Just gonna figure out which way. And my dog is playing, so you might hear her bark at me because she won't insist on me playing with her right now. So masking that off, this is just a piece of post-it, a post-it. And then th these are post-it tape. So sometimes they end up sticking, so I just gotta loosen them with my, with my scissors. All right, so we have the big one in. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna ink up this one. This is the medium size poinsettia. So I'm actually gonna go on both sides of this kind of up here, just overlapping slightly. And I'm going to re-ink it because I, again, I want this to be juicy. I'm going to pull this red all out of this, of the lines here. So we can go down here a little bit. I'm going to kind of do a C curve. And then I'm going to use this mask here. And I'm going to use this little one. And I'm going to place this one right here. It's messy. I pushed a little hard on that one. It's fine. Doesn't matter because we are going to pull all that color right out of that line. So it's fine. Oh, good. And then this one here, we're going to do the same thing. Put another one right here. So I'm gonna color the, I'm gonna watercolor these first and then we can go in and we can mask these off again and add some greenery or whatever. But this is really a tutorial on how to color these poinsettias and how to make them look kind of three dimensional. So let's put these over here for later. I'm not going to use any extra color right now. I'm simply going to grab my, I'm going to start with my zero because this is very, very small and intricate. These outer bigger petals, I might actually go in and um, use my one, but for right now, I'm going to just, I'm going to just use my zero. So I'm going to get it nice and wet. I'm going to pinch it off because this is our very first layer, so we want it to be really light. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of touch, and I'm kind of dabbing, I'm just dabbing. I'm not dragging that color, I'm dabbing it. So I just wanna dab. Now this first one here, 
This leaf is sitting behind this one here, but this one is behind this one here. So I'm going to grab all of that color by hitting the side of my brush right along the inside of that line of that color and just allowing it to kind of bleed. Okay. And the same thing here. I'm going to really pull the color here out and keep it dark because this this one is above this one, but below this little baby one here. So I'm going to pull the color actually out of that little baby one and kind of do some almost negative painting. Now, as you'll notice, I'm not coming all the way out to the edge. I'm leaving a little bit of a white line because you don't want it to be completely colored in or you'll lose all depth. So we're really just trying to pull that color out as a highlight as... um. Yeah, let's just try to pull the color out. Okay, so that looks good to me. Now you see I didn't, even in here, I did not pull all that color out. I left some white space because it gives interest. It makes your, it make, gives your painting some character. So I try to stay where the lines are. So here I can pull the color out here and pull it down. On the other side of it, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a white line just to show where that was. Well, sometimes I can't actually achieve that, so it's fine. Nothing's ruined, everything is fine. See, it's still darker right there. We'll come in and, and highlight that a little bit more with the other side of the pen. So right now, just again, just dabbing the color out, wanting it to be really dark in these inside layers. We're going to put some darker color in there. All right, so the same thing with this one here. Now this one's sitting under this one, but above this one. So it's going to be really light on this side of it. But under here and on the side, it's going to be really dark. So we want to pull that color right out of that above that leaf, right into this leaf below it. There's also some little berries in here that I want to make sure I don't lose. So I'm just kind of dabbing my my brush right along them, but not inside of them. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one right here because that one it's kind of melting into this one and I'm I want to make sure I don't lose it. So I'm just gonna pull out the color from behind this one, and it's behind these two, so I want to make sure I get enough color behind there, and then just pulling this color out. I really want to make sure I add some color here to distinguish this one from the one underneath it, below it. We're going to make these ones desaturated so that it makes this one stand out a bit. So hopefully, anyway, that's the plan. Plan for no plan. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm just pulling that color from that leaf on top and pulling it into the leaf underneath and then blending it out towards the end, leaving a highlight on the edges. And then we'll go to this one over here. That gives these ones a time to dry so that everything's not just melting into each other and becoming one big red blob. You're maintaining each, you're basically doing each individual petal which is exactly how you should do it so that you can get some really nice depth to your paintings or to your images. This one here, it's kind of sitting out into this one. We'll make that a little bit darker. Kind of make that a little more pronounced. I like these ones here. These ones are a little too colored in for my taste, but when we add some more color, I'll 
lighten some of that up too. So that's, it's fine. And literally I'm just basically moving, jumping my brush around and just moving that color. The more color I pull out of this line and push into the middle of this flower, the darker it gets. So now we'll move on. As you notice, I went from those leaves that are all underneath to the leaves on the top. I sometimes get lost in the leaves, so I tend to try to make a pattern like if I'm going around and then spiral my way up. Um, that tends to kind of center me a little bit. But I feel you if you if you struggle with, you know, losing where you are where you're at. I get it. And it's fine if you go out of the line, that's fine. Do not let that deter you. Um, a lot of people have a lot of problems because they're, they're not having, um, they're not main, uh, what do I want to say? Maintaining their water, preserving their, not preserving their water, but just getting a nice, you know, you, you want to have a nice damp brush, but you don't want to have it too much water so that it, it leaves these water drops in your, all over your um, painting, unless that's what you're going for. If you're going for a more loose um, look, then you know you might want to have some water drops. This is a very controlled painting, whereas you could do, you know, a, a wash of pink, and then stamp your and stamp your poinsettia and let it dry, and then add some really deep colors in there. Um, that might be a fun way to approach this or these poinsettias. There's not really any. Rhyme, there's no right or wrong. It's just, um, you should just color them however you want to color them. If you want to have highlights and you want them to look 3D, these, where these deep valleys are, those need to be really, really dark. And then on these top flowers, as you notice, they're a lot lighter. They're a lot more white space, which then brings them to the forefront a little bit more. Okay? So that's how you... Paint a poinsettia. This paint poinsettia. That's our first pass at it. So I'm gonna let that dry, and I'm gonna move on to these other ones. And I'm gonna actually, I think, I'm going to speed this video up so I'm not going to talk at all. And we will finish these two, and then we'll talk about this at the end. So um, here we go. As I say that, <clears throat> I have a little bit more water on my brush this time. So this was very controlled. So maybe this is how we should do this. So this is this has got a little bit more water. As you can see, it's kind of puddling a little bit and doing like a little bit of a wet on wet when I touch these other, but you also notice I'm losing this line right here, which is fine with me, but if that's not the look you're going for, you wanna be careful. So right now I'm just, Again, dabbing a lot of this water onto my picture, my painting right on that on the line, the colored line, so that it makes that color bleed out and into this poinsettia. Then I can take a damp brush and add some water in between, and that'll bleed out and give a nice soft look, as opposed to a very controlled look. This is going to look a little more watercolory. And I'm kind of laying the belly of the brush down so that it gets a little more water onto the leaf so that it bleeds out and it just gives a more soft look. I like this look as well and this is something I do a lot too. It's, it's just fun to play and explore and figure out what you like and what works for you. Um, if you're frustrated do do some exercises. Write down why you didn't like something. Journal about, not journal so much as journal about it, but as far as like a journal, like, oh, uh, let me show you. Like I can't send like this kind of a journal where, yeah, I'm, I'm just 
writing things in it, um, practicing, writing what I don't like, what I might like, um, just, exp you know, just, just having fun and figuring out what I do, you know, what my style is, because I don't, I think I have a style, but I'm just not sure where it is right now, and I'm working on that. But I really like the way this um, technique makes it look really soft and and dreamy kind of looking. So there's that one. So let's see, how can we do this one a little different over here? So I have actually quite a bit of water on my brush right now. So I'm just going to take the very tip of it and I'm just going to pull, as you can see, I'm kind of flicking with my, pen, my brush. Kind of flicking that color towards the middle. And then not even really kind of caring where that color's going because it's really all red. Except for this middle part, I want to make sure I don't get rid of those berries, although I can put them back in with some bleed proof white. It's just going to be more of a free type of a painting. And then we got, there's that one. Okay. Now we have two more. So we'll grab this one over here and I'm going to have a little bit more water on my brush again because I want to do a little bit of and something like this might cause you to lose a little bit of the stamp itself but I just try not to drag my brush and just kind of um, bounce it so that you can kind of see some of the lines still. Now these ones are really juicy, which is great. because so that's going to make some real nice contrast behind this one right here. And that white makes them, everything just pop out a little bit more. So that's it. That's how you paint these poinsettias. There's really no rhyme or reason. You could stop right here and this would be great. And I think this is beautiful. You could add your greenery and stuff like that. Um, right now, I think I'm going to let this dry. So you could stop here, like I said, and move on with your life. But I can never do that. And I need to make this as a Christmas card. So I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to use a couple of these new stamps from the latest release. So I think I'm just going to use these. I'm going to place a mask. Over these just in case and then all right so this one is going to go out this way which is kind of good and for this i'm going to use a 249 i'm not going to use all of it I'm just going to use this top half so and I'm going to tuck it, I think, right up here. And then maybe right there. I don't even know if I need the other side. I think I can use the same stamp on all of it. And it didn't get right up close. That's fine. I'm going to bring that color right down so it doesn't matter. It does not matter at all. Okay. Nope, that's not how it goes. So 
A little funky trying to figure out how the stamp stamps. That's okay. Not need to be perfect. I'm just going to switch this guy out, put this guy in, color up this top area, and I think I'm going to stamp. Let's see. That way. And then like that. So I'm going to need some more here, which I understand, and I'm just building this slowly because um, sometimes it's better to go slow because sometimes more is not necessarily better. So here's, I'm just going to pull this color out. As you can see, I'm pulling it right down in and touching that red because I like that way that bleeds. So just touching all that a little bit. Pulls a little bit of that red into the color, into the foliage, which I think is beautiful. And then just bring in a little bit of that color out. All right. And then we'll do the side on this side. This, you can tell, was a lot more water than this. I love that look. I think it's a f fabulous watercolory look. And I think Kendra's style is really kind of free, flowing, watery, colory, and I love that style. So I don't mind it if I lose a little bit of that stamp look and I get a little more watercolorly look. All right, so let's All right, let's cover this up. Okay, let me color that up. Okay. We'll do this side too. And then we'll switch this one back on. Okay. See, now this might have been a much, a lot. We'll have to see how it comes out. Oh, maybe I'll be fine. So now I'm just going to pull the rest of this, oops, see, keep it on there, that's fine. Now this one, as I'm pulling this color out and I'm just dabbing my brush, I'm actually laying the belly of this brush down so that it's really kind of pulling that water out. I didn't squeeze a lot off, because like I said, I really like that watercolory look. And we'll do the same over here. Kind of take this out of here. Just da I'm just dancing my brush my brush around. That's all I'm doing. Just I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just dancing my brush so that um, it's pulling some of the color out, 
It's keeping some in the lines and then it's pulling some outside of the lines to create some depth. And it frames these frames these poinsettias quite nicely, I think. All right, so I think we need a little bit more here. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna create an, put the mask on, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop it so I don't go over the board, but I'm not even inking it up again. I'm gonna huff it on it. Just huffing on it to give some lighter color here. We'll do this, this one. just to fill that in, but I want it to be lighter than this this color here so that it fades back into the background, kind of like over here. So I'm really gonna make this light. Maybe bring a little bit more of this color in. And you'll notice as this green and this red kind of mix, it's kind of giving this grayish blue haze color, which I think is really pretty. Okay, so that's that. Now just to give this corner just a little bit mm, more depth here, not depth, but um, let's kind of bring it around a little bit more here. So let's do that with How about some of this, I don't know what it is, but it's a bow, a bow or something. Like a pine bow. So I think I'm gonna go with more of this. This is a 346, which is like a greenish blue, more of blue than green. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually stamp it off over here. Cause I don't want it to be way too bright. I just want it to give me a little, oh, that's not, not enough. All right, let's try that again. Stamp it off once. There we go. And then I can put some right here, maybe. Kind of make that a little bit fuller. And then I have the, same, the other side of it here. So we'll just add some of that this way. just to kind of frame it all in, I think. Maybe add just a little bit beside here. Okay, take my number two again, or my number one brush, and then I'm just gonna soften this. Like I said, I'm just dabbing this so that, you see how it's giving this really, oops, that was a lot of water, okay. Just gonna sop it up a little bit, which is, it's fine. I'm not gonna freak out because I really wanted that <laughs> watercolory look, so it's all good. So while this is still wet, I have a little bit of this blue still on my little stamp here, so I'm gonna actually just stamp it right inside that wet area so that that See how the branches kind of come out? Those will soften, but at least I don't have a blob there that without anything. And I think that we'll see how that dries and how it looks. If we have to fix it some more, we'll fix it some more. I love this, this greenish blue color. It's just so pretty. See, and I can make these more watercolory to match that. And the same thing, I can take this one and stamp it right there. That might've been a little bit too much, but that's all right. I don't really get too um, hung up on things like that. People are gonna be happy to get your card. They're not going to care if it's everything just in my mind is just a happy accident. It was supposed to end up like that. So I never worry about anything that happens that it all, it's all good. <clears throat> okay, so I'm done.
I think, with that part of it. Um, so they have this. I think I'll do this one here, which is... The joy of Christmas be yours. May the joy of Christmas be yours. So that's how it'll end up being, I think. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, just because I am who I am, I'm going to add a little bit of red back into here. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of this blue-green just to get some of these shadows in here. So first I'm going to do a little bit of red just to try to get a little bit more dark color in here. I'm pinching that off and kind of blending it out. Just see how I just got a little bit of red in there? You don't want to go overboard. You don't want to get over color everything and, and get rid of all your highlights. You just want to add a little bit of darkness in here. And I wanted to get some pure red in here before I put my shadows in. Okay. This one is already pretty dark. I'm not using a lot of water. I'm really using just um, some darker pigment. As you see, I'm not d dipping my wa my brush into water. I'm just d dipping it into the paint, into the paint, kind of paint well, and then just making sure I'm not leaving any like dark lines. Kind of making sure I'm putting a little bit of dampness into my brush just to be able to blend it all out because of course we want these beautifully vibrant red poinsettias jumping off of our page Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit more here. Now just into some of these crevices here, I'm going to just put some darker color. So how I'm going to get that darker color is I'm going to actually take some of this green and I'm going to mix it with some of this red. And what that's going to give me is this really pretty gray, dark, purplish gray color, which is going to be fantastic. So if it gets a little red, add a little more green. And I think this is actually a pretty good, this is actually a great shadow color too. And we'll put a little shadow in um, after, just so you can see. Don't be afraid to add these highlights. These are the things that make your, make everything pop, okay? So don't be afraid of them. You just want to put them in the very darkest corners of these leaves, these petals. Okay. Go around all these little berries and then uh, some dark areas in here. It's it's a way to get a deeper um, shadow than if you were just trying to do it with your red. You are not going to be able to put enough red into these areas to get them to um, have any depth because red, it's just not it will just always look like it won't give you any depth. So you have to use, usually what I do is you can either use brown, which 
We'll give you um, we'll give you some kind of a highlight, but it's not as good as the complementary color. I used the green, and this was a blue green, which was even more of a complementary color because it had some purple with once it mixed with the red, it gave it some purple color. See, I had a little too much water in my brush, so I'm just gonna put that back in here. Trying to blend some of these highlights out a little bit with this red. Um, but using the complementary color just basically desaturates it and it gives you a nice um, natural highlight instead of a very harsh highlight that a black or a, a brown will give. And it doesn't necessarily change that red. The red is still vibrant and it's just got a nice little highlight at the bottom. So gonna just oh my goodness too much water a thirsty brush is a good thing it can pull up a lot of color um, okay and then here just put some more in here it goes a long way to helping define the petals especially if they got lost a little bit Just gives a different look. So I'm gonna add a little bit more red because I lost with that that water droplet. When you add too much water, it will actually like it will desaturate your color. So you just want to come in here with a little bit more, and right over that highlight that we did is fine. It actually just it makes it better if you go right over that color with that dark color that red again enhances that highlight. Let's do a little bit more. So I think that's pretty good. Um, just to kind of finish it off. I'm gonna take this little, I think this is in the same set. It just looks like a berries. So my 969 because brown is a great contrast. I'm not gonna do the berries in red. I'm just gonna put a couple of these in here and there. Just gives it a little bit more of a finished look. And that's it. This is it, I think that's done. I'm gonna just give these a little bit of a, oh, you know what, now I wanted to show you how I do the little bit of a shadow. So the shadow, actually, I'm gonna use my, this is my six. I'm gonna pick up that green red color, really watery, and I'm going to just drop it where the shadow would be. So I'm gonna drop it in here, and I'm not. I'm just leaving it very wet. Just dropping it here where the shadow would be. And then just kind of feathering it out so that it's not such a harsh line.
Okay, so I'm going to call that done. I'm going to throw this in my misty. I'm going to finish it off with a sentiment. And I'm going to put it on a card. So here, now that we're done. And you could add, you could definitely add in here some... Um, some more details you could put some white on here whatever you, whatever makes you happy um but i need to make them fast so i don't generally put a ton of ton of details into them and then just take off my tape i like to save my tape for future use it a little bit that's all right I can always just trim that off and that's it thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you have a great day